Hey everyone, uh, today we are diving into identity on Azure. Uh, my, my name is Ubhane. Hi, my name is Karishma and I work on the identity uh, SDK team. And today we'll explore about what identity and access management is, uh, what the role of Microsoft Intra ID, formerly known as AAD, uh, is, and uh, what is the role of Azure client libraries and the token credentials is in this whole process. And by the end, uh, we ensure you that you'll have a very solid understanding of how Azure manages identity securely and efficiently. So let's get started. Uh, so first, let's talk about identity and access management, or also known as IAM. IAM is a set of policies and technologies that make sure that the right users have access to the right resources. Think of it like a high-tech security system in a building. Uh, it verifies who you are, um, that's the authentication layer. And then it ensures that you can uh, access only the rooms you are allowed to, and that's authorization. IAM is critical for security as it helps control access to systems, manage roles, and meet compliance requirements. So next, now let's look at uh, Microsoft Endra ID. Uh, you might know it uh, by its old name, uh, which is Azure Active Directory or AAD. Uh, Endra ID is Microsoft's cloud-based IAM platform. It does three main things. Uh, authentication, where it verifies who you are, whether you are a user, device, or an app. And then it make, takes care of authorization, where it ensures you have access to the right resources. And then for the integration, uh, where it offers you the seamless integration uh, or facilities with on-premise systems and cloud apps like Office 365 or even custom applications. And Enter ID is the backbone of identity on Azure, simplifying access while securing your environment. So now let's see how does Enter ID fit into your overall ecosystem. Take a look at this diagram here. It connects with on-premises Active Directory and integrates with your cloud-based app. It supports devices like laptops, phones, and IoT devices. And it enables secure collaboration with business partners and other external users. This integration ensures a smooth, secure identity management experience across your entire e environment from on-premises systems to cloud services. So now let's clear up a common confusion which is authentication versus authorization. Authentication is about verifying who you are. For example, when you log in with your username and password, you're proving your identity. Authorization happens after authentication. It, it's about determining uh, what you can access. For example, once you're logged in, do you have permission to edit a file or just view it? To put it simply, authentication asks, who are you? Authorization asks, what you can do? Both are crucial to keeping your system secure. So now I will hand it over to Karishma from our team to, to explain how does Entra ID authenticate and authorize. Now we talk about uh, how does Entra ID authenticate and authorize. So uh, essentially Entra ID uses uh, industry protocols like OpenID Connect and Auth2 uh, protocols to enable authentication authorization through security tokens. Like Entra ID has three types of tokens essentially. Uh, ID tokens, access tokens, and refresh tokens. Like all of these are uh, types of JWTs. That's JSON Web Tokens. So ID token is essentially uh, like it proves that the user has been authenticated. Versus access token uh, uses the O2 protocol, and that allows a client application to access a specific resource to perform specific actions on behalf of the user. So access token uses O2 protocol and open ID or uh, connect is related to the ID token. And uh, refresh token is used to, like it is a lo long lived token uh, and it is used when your existing access token has been expired and you need to request a new access token. In our Azure ident identity library, we essentially have authentication support uh, all the Azure uh, SDKs to support authentication to different Azure services. And uh, we have this available in .NET, Java, JavaScript, Python, Go, and C++. And we have different credential classes, which are collectively called as token credentials. And uh, token credentials is nothing but an abstraction 
of an implementation for obtaining an access token that signifies a unique authentication process to do your authentication and authorization from entra id essentially like all the all the token credentials that are there in the azure identity library they help you get an access token from entra id so some examples of some of the authentication methods that we have are azure cli managed identity and workload identity and these credentials can also be used as a sequence of different credentials in order to create like a chain of credentials which you can try one after the other so we have like something called a chain token credential where you can create your own custom chain of token credentials as as part of the azure identity library we also provide an opinionated and pre configured set of credentials that is intended for use for the initial proof of concept stages and this is called as default as your credential this can work in various environments and with the most common authentication methods we advise you to not use this credential beyond the initial proof of concept and uh, instead you can create your own specific credential chain for more information you can search credential chain uh, as your and you can put in the language for example python or java or dotnet or javascript we can write a demo app together in this first we can create a credential we can import default as your credential and also for today's example we are using uh, the the typescript as your identity sdk we have the same class in all the languages like default as your credential so after we do this we need to create like a blob service client like a storage blob service client and for that we'll have to uh, import this blob service client from the storage blob library then let's see if we have it in our package.json okay yeah. so so we are importing like the latest uh, versions of these libraries so the blob service client needs uh, your storage url which is essentially your account name and in our case it is aws demo and then the second argument in most of the service clients across all the azure sdk essentially is the credential and in our case is the uh, is the credential object that we just created and then we can try and create a container so we can first decide the container name we can say that it is a demo container actually you know what let's let's first try and install these packages i think okay so the packages are installed so now we can get the intelligence which is great now let's now we can just try and log this response once it's created uh, then i didn't try this we can like try log the request id oh or if you want we can log something else okay so let's see you already installed this you can try and build and then I can run this. So now this is going to use default as your credential uh, to try to log in. And as we can see that the uh, default as your credential has failed. And then, so there are like a couple of credentials underneath it. So it will not use the environment credential because we don't have a dot env setup. And we are running it locally, so it will not use manage identity. So it was expecting the Azure CLI credential to work with this uh, and it's prompting me to run az login so essentially i will uh, run az login and try to log in first so our az login is successful now uh, i was just thinking of changing the container to maybe like like a test container and then maybe we can give it like today's timestamp as well along with it so now that we have renamed uh let me uh, build this first and then we can run it oh so i think instead of using this api for blob service client i'll just uh, use another method called well, as create container and we can try working with that click the run build and then we can do okay so so seems like uh it did not like the name container in the container name 
So uh, we have this demo and timestamp uh, that is successfully created in this uh, storage account. And we can go back uh, in our Azure portal to, to verify if it's created or not. So uh, so now that we see that we have created uh, the, the demo container that we wanted to create, like this has today's timestamp on it as the name. And uh, we've used uh, Azure CLI credential as part of the default Azure credential to authenticate and authorize us to create this container. So now moving on to uh, the demo uh, of default Azure credential being showed by Java. Over to you, Vinay. All right, folks. So now we will dive into uh, default Azure credential uh, demo for Java. So let me start by sharing my screen for the default Azure credential with Java. And I'm sharing my ID intelligent demo. This is a demo app, pretty much bare bones, nothing there. So the goal of this demo is basically to start by giving you an experience of how to authenticate with Azure Key Vault in this scenario, where Krishma previously showed him Azure Storage. But in this example, we'll use Azure Key Vault service as the target service, which we are going to authenticate against and create a Key Vault secret inside it. Let's get to the fun stuff now. First step is to create the default Azure credential. And you can see Copilot is giving me a nice prompt here, but let's skip that and write it on our own. You need to create the builder first and then just build it. So it's as simple as that. Now you might be wondering why didn't we do any configurations here. We'll get to that later. Now let's start building a secret key wall secret line here. So this is where I'm creating a secret line builder. Now, as required parameters, I need to pass in the vault URL. So you can fetch this info from your key vault or through the portal or Azure CLI or PowerShell. So depending on what you are used to, just get this details from the properties of your key vault and add it here. I have it piggybacked here in my ID. So I'm just going to use that. Then I'm going to supply the credential layer. So this is needed to authenticate. And I'm just going to pass in the default Azure credential, which we created in the previous step. And then we can just build this client. And now let's use this secret client to create a, a secret keyword. We can name it my secret and my secret value as the password or the, the secret value, just for demo purposes. So this line once executed should create the secret in the key vault with the specified value. And in the next line, I'm gonna get the secret back. So do that here. And this thing returns a key vault secret object. Let's do it. And now I'm gonna print out the key vault secret value. So let's see how this is gonna work. It's building right now. I'm gonna do it's gonna use default Azure credential here to authenticate against the keyword service. And default Azure credential offers a chain of credentials underneath, which are pre selected by us. So, and they run it as a chain underneath. Uh, so, you can see here how it executes exactly in a few seconds. So, now here you can see environment credential is unavailable. This is the first credential which default Azure credential chain buys. Uh, workload identity is the next. Manage identity credential is after that. And this is the whole sequence of credentials which are attempted. You can see in the end Azure CLI credential returns a token, which was the access token returned Azure CLI credentials. And it used my user credentials already, which I had, uh, which it pretty much piggybacked on from my AZ login session before. And I didn't really have to authenticate uh, again. So it works very well for your local authentication environments and gets you on blog quickly without going through any hassle of setting up a new application for your authentication purposes. Here you can see in the end it prints out a secret value, which is what we set up here on line 23 and line 26 printed it out. So yeah, this is a, just a quick demo of how to use default Azure credential here. Mind you, this is just for prototyping purposes here only and for your production apps. Uh, it's going to need some optimizations, but don't fall in the sky that is. And that wraps up the demo for this session. Uh, and I hope you learned a lot from this. So moving on to the next slide here. Uh, 
We, you can check out our detailed samples for .NET, Java, JavaScript, Python, Go, and C++. We offer these uh, libraries across all these languages, and you can use them idiomatically in the same manner uh, for all these languages or to auth authenticate and, uh, against any of the services you're using. And uh, you can stay in touch with us. This is the link ak.ms uh, slash azsdk slash code. Uh, when you go to this repo, you will see the readme, which has the links to all the language repos and the various troubleshooting guides and the readmes of, uh, of, of all the different languages uh, that we support. And uh, in order to follow us on uh, X, which was formerly known as Twitter, uh, you can go to uh, Azure SDK. Uh, that is our handle. And uh, if you have any questions uh, or if you want to follow us on Stack Overflow, uh, definitely, definitely check us out on stackoverflow.com slash collectives slash Azure. Thank you. And then uh, definitely give us feedback and uh, feel free to contribute to our repos. Uh, definitely don't use uh, default as your credential more than like the, just the initial proof of concept. I would encourage uh, you to either create your own custom chain token credential or use like the, the credential directly. We'll uh, definitely be making more videos, detailed videos about chain token credential managed identity. VAM, a service principle authentication. So definitely let us know in the comments if you'd like uh, to hear about any of these topics and stay tuned for more videos and do like and subscribe before you leave. <laughs>